Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Syncrable Space Program 1.12. In a previous video, I introduced an upgrade to the shuttle using the first stage of New Glenn. This is the Trident rocket where the boosters of the shuttle, which were solid rocket boosters, were replaced by the first stage of New Glenn from Blue Origin. And so were liquid stages using methane and oxygen. And the external tank to the shuttle, somewhat problematic because of all the foam, was also replaced by one of the New Glenn tanks, basically. I mean, of course, it'd have to be modified somewhat. And so looking the same, it made sense to call this the Trident because we've got three of the same tank like that. Uh, however, more recently, I have updated the look of my New Glenn tanks. So now we have the ones that look like this. And I'll just slap it on there so we can see it. Uh, with the unpainted bottom and then a separate interstage that also has the unpainted sort of metal look and then of course the unpainted fins and this if i ever get them on right anyway that that sort of thing i don't know if this gives the right vibe for the shuttle maybe maybe not uh, you guys can consider that but uh that's that's a problem also you have to rotate them in a very specific way if you want to use the wings on the boosters for the recovery and that's because if you put the wings on you have to make sure that it doesn't hit the wing of the space shuttle so the new glenn first stage does have some issues mainly visual issues uh, it still allows the shuttle to carry a very high capacity 70 tons to low earth orbit but i was definitely in the market for some other options and so that's what we're going to explore in this video another option. And so here we have the shuttle on the back of the Orion carrier plane. Of course I would use the Orion carrier plane. This is not the first time the shuttle has run on the back of the Orion carrier plane, but it's in a different configuration with one of these wraparound tanks. Uh, you might have seen this sort of thing before. They had a variation of it uh, with other SSTO style space planes, but uh, we have this this wraparound tank around the shuttle instead of the external tank because it'd be tough to put the external tank and the shuttle and uh, uh, the Orion carrier plane together. And this has some benefits, right? Uh, perhaps less chance for the foam to hit the leading edge, uh, perhaps. Or at least it won't be going at the same velocity if it hits. Uh, the engines can be tilted straight. They don't have to be tilted down the way they normally are on the space shuttle. They can just be straight like that uh, because the center of mass is all in line. And there are problems though. Uh, one problem is the weird shape of the tank. It's smaller than the shuttle's normal external tank. It doesn't have as much volume. And that's because the boost that the Orion carrier plane can give it, it lasts for a long time. So that's the positive. It lasts for three minutes compared to the two minutes of the regular boosters for the space shuttle, but it its combined thrust is not as much as that provided by the two SRBs. So we can't carry as much. In fact, our thrust weight ratio at the start is 1.26, which is definitely not as high as the shuttle normally has it. So we're already pushing that a little bit and we can't carry as much in the external tank. Uh, its dry mass is heavier because of its odd shape, but not that much heavier. Because it's overall smaller in volume, it turns out it's not too bad. The load situation, remember I've mentioned before that the hydrogen tank on the external tank is not bearing a load, it's just hanging off. That's true of this as well because it's sort of attached to the top of the shuttle. We should have struts. This is just a temporary arrangement so that I could see the fit. Uh, there should be struts going to the top portion of the shuttle, especially the SRB section, uh, not SRB, RCS section here, which was actually a separate removable section of the space shuttle. That's probably where it would most likely attach to. And so, yeah, but otherwise the hydrogen tanks, which would be down here, do not have to bear a load. It will still be, uh, everything is still being pushed at the oxygen tank up top. So that is the configuration that we have with the shuttle this kind of external tank and the Orion carrier plane and it can't carry 70 tons to orbit I don't think my best estimate right now is I want 45 tons out of it so we've got in here a 45 ton tank of avgas 
and that's what it's going to try to carry and let's see if it can manage that but of course I've had to adjust the KOS script quite a lot so that it has been testing and yeah uh, we'll see if I've forgotten anything on that but you know the Ryan carrier plane uh, already is very interesting as far as its handling to launch and then the space shuttle is a whole other thing so I've smushed the two scripts together and we will see how it goes. Now the reason why this is a good arrangement and gets us more payload to orbit is because the Orion carrier plane is heavier and more efficient than the SRBs. The normal shuttle launch stack was 2030, uh, so 2030 tons. Uh, this is more than 200 tons more than that and that's all in the Orion carrier plane. In fact more than that's in the Orion carrier plane because we made the external tanks smaller. Uh, so it's got a much longer burn time and it's much more efficient than the SRBs and that's why we get the payload boost. It does reserve a little bit of fuel for its return. Uh, well it goes forward to the Bahamas and lands in the Bahamas uh, but that's not that much fuel because it just flies forward. Now whether it gets to the right speed for that is a separate thing we need to test. We do use the shuttle's main engines right at the start, first of all, because they need to be lit. Oh, the vertical stabilizer really cuts that tower close. Anyway, um, because they have to be lit on the ground, but also there's no way that the Orion carrier plane could carry this load on its own. It needs the SSMEs to help. Uh, the normal load on the back of the Orion carrier plane is 130 tons. Uh, right now, the shuttle plus this external tank is close to 700. But it so happens that the three engines on the back of the shuttle uh, generate close to 700 tons of thrust. With the lower acceleration, there's no need to throttle down through max Q with this. Okay, we have a bit of a throttle down here. That's for the G-Force. And rolling over. Well, the rollover is much faster than it normally is with the Ryan carry plane, and that's because of the gimbling of the SSMEs. Using a lot of pitch here. We're definitely not going to go as high and fast as the Ryan carry plane normally ends up, as it switches off some of its engines to maintain balance. So yeah, getting to the Bahamas will be an interesting question. Maybe we should have an aim for Cape Canaveral instead. Oh well, actually I should be launching from Tampico because obviously we can't get to the Bahamas like this. Oh. oh, I missed separation there almost. There we go. It separates and shuts off its engines. The shuttle is on its own. So using a lot of pitch, but not... A problem. But yeah, uh, if we were really trying to recover the Orion carrier plane, we need to launch out of Tampico, not out of Cape Canaveral. That would be important. Uh oh. No, I didn't really want it to roll over again. Oh, shucks. It is the rollover it does for the Tedris stuff, but we don't need it to do that in this situation. Well, it's cutting it a bit close here. Let's see. All right, but it does make it. And it needs to get away from that. Okay, that part's fine. Oh, did it open those doors? Ah, I have the external tank umbilical doors closed, of course, but then the script opens, uh, well, it normally closes them right there, but it actually opened it, opened them right there. So pretty tight, but 45 tons seems like the right estimate. Well, actually, uh, instead of trying to have this finish orbit, which I think will work just fine. 
I'm going to change the script up. Okay, getting the improved script in. Hopefully, hopefully improved. So really the question is whether people like this version, this upgrade to the shuttle, <laughs> cocooned in its tank. Uh, the parameters for the tank were that it couldn't stretch beyond the OMS engines and I didn't want it wider than the wings. So that's that. those were also considerations. But if I wanted it to be as heavy as the actual external tank, I would have just made it taller. But anyway, whether people like this version or whether people like the Trident version with the New Glenn rocket or New Glenn first stages as boosters. I feel like the Trident rocket, it doesn't look quite right to me with the three things. This, but then does this look right? I don't know. At least they both have a benefit of a significant payload capacity upgrade over the existing space shuttle. And the space shuttle could still use the Giliodon the re-entry script, I believe. Uh, in this case, all I've changed is straightening out the engines. Hopefully, the Giliodon the uh, uh, re-entry script would still be capable of bringing it down. I'm not using the Giliodon the launch script because, of course, I've changed things significantly. But you know, that, that had the benefit of the abort options, which I hope never to use, uh, and also the dialogue, but, you know, maybe it's just better to have it like this anyway, without all the dialogues. So, yeah, launching it, I don't think I need that launch script. It's maybe more accurate to the real shuttle, but it's not especially more efficient, especially if I'm going to be using this sort of booster. But the re-entry script is definitely nice. Oh, there we go. Separate it off. Saved a little bit. It really only needs RCS propellant. Okay, looking to make sure there isn't any rollover this time. Should stay this way around, but it still does have to go down and forward as it gets away from the external tank. Okay, and the burn. These engines sort of gimbal, just like just go all the way instead of subtly gimbling. I don't know what's up with them. That's higher than before. Oh, that's not what I want to see. Okay, well, good thing I've uh, cheated on some of the colliders there too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty high. Hmm. So having it stay upright changed the calculation a bit. But yeah, I need to have them not gimbal so much right at the end. It should just hold right at the end so that we don't have that situation. Well, more tweaking of the KOS script as usual. But let's just see it get to orbit with its 45 ton payload. And then I'll call it for now. Still undecided on which upgrade to the space shuttle I want to use. Oh, the external tank is still hanging out there. Alright, we are in orbit. So, there you have it. That is the space shuttle on the Orion carrier plane in a potentially viable configuration. But, yeah, I'm not entirely sure it's the one I want to use either.
which way should we go? 70 ton capacity and the Trident rocket reusing the New Glenn boosters or this version reusing the Orion carrier plane as well but 45 ton capacity. Well anyway with the shuttle in orbit I'll leave it here for now and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.